I guess we're early. Yeah. Sorry.
Okay. Hi, everybody. It's so lovely to have this uh, final event and to, um, to be here at the end of the funded period, anyway, uh, of Carrie Cook. So, um, welcome. Welcome to everybody. Um, it's uh, really, um, it's a little bit kind of uh, overwhelming to be at this point. Um, after all the planning and all of the activity, to be at a point where we like, yeah, we've done everything that we said we would do. We've kind of delivered on everything. And uh, now's a moment. I'm hoping that this evening will be a moment for us to reflect uh, on what we've done, um, on some of the outcomes from that, and also some of the agendas going forward. Um, so yeah, we're very, very, you're very, very welcome to, uh, to join us in doing that. Uh, I want to welcome the people who are in the room, which we have some of our RGS partners, Royal Geographical Society partners, are in the, the room with us, and it's lovely to be here with them. Um, I want to welcome all the people who are coming to our curated audience and are going to spend time discussing with us. Uh, I'm including us, I'm including myself and Tia Monique, so I'm not, I'm not welcoming Tia Monique because she's already here and uh, she knows she's welcome. And um, I want to welcome the people who are on YouTube, our YouTube audience, who uh, uh, thank you for, for coming and spending the evening live with us. And I also want to welcome all the people who watch us in recording, um, because we notice that uh, lots of people are coming to watch us in our events as recorded events, and you're also very, very welcome uh, to join joining us in the event. All of you, if you have feedback for us or kind of ideas that you want to send me an email uh, and talk about, you know, just Google my name, Pat Not Solo, into into any search engine, <laughs> I should say, and um, and you'll find my email address. And you know, do just send me an email and give me some feedback if you'd like to. But um, yeah, welcome to everybody. I want to kind of push straight on, really, to the meat of the, or I shouldn't say that anymore, should, the substance of what we're going to do this evening, which is really for the three of us as, a, as the team of people who've been working on uh, Carrie Cook. Uh, that's myself as lead researcher, um, Dr. Tia Monique Uzo as um, a postdoctoral research fellow, and um, Rita Gale, who is our postgraduate researcher. We're going to have a chat together, really, about, uh, about Carrie Cook and about our experiences and, and where we're going, really, uh, in the future. And then we're going to have a representative uh, from the Royal Geographical Society, who's going to talk about the partnership that we've had together, um, because we want to think about Carrie Cook as something that impacts institutions uh, and where, where institutions will take some of the agendas forward. So that's very important to us. Uh, and then um, once we've done that, then we'll open up to our curated audience who are going to uh, join in with a discussion. So um, shall we get started? I think. Um, we're going to be able to see Rita. Great. So um, we can see Rita just now. Rita is, as I say, our postgraduate researcher. Tia Manikuzor is our postdoctoral research fellow. So, so lovely to have us all here together. Not quite in the flesh together, but at least all together <laughs> in conversation. We've had Carrie Cook at a strange time in, in the, the life of of the world, really. We've had Carrie Cook at a time when we have had to be online a lot and we have had to have conversations on Zoom. Um, but I guess I've, I've really got used to the three of us being together in so many different ways, mm -hmm. isn't it? Being yeah. together um, in person and being together on Zoom. So what we're doing tonight where some of us are in a room together, some of us are on Zoom, is pretty typical of what it's been like actually yeah. in Carrie Cook. And so we've, we've made the best of it and we've made more than, more than what we expected really um, from that experience. So I have three questions that we're going to sort of talk through um, this evening. I'll start with the first one and then we'll see how, how things go. So um, the first thing is then, what has this project given us each of us, um, perhaps in terms of agency, um, but any of the, you can lead it in any way that you want to in terms of how, where it's taken you. Uh, both as a team, we can think about that, and also individually. So um, let me start with Rita. Tell me, Rita, what's Thank this you, project Beth. given you? No, no problem. 
I knew you'd enjoy that. <laughs> um, you know, it's been, uh, gosh, it's been such an amazing year, really. Um, I think as far as the project's concerned, I think it's really given me, if I speak about myself, a really a lot of confidence and just that opportunity to experiment creatively uh, in a way that is often difficult. I think, uh, you know, when you're a postgraduate researcher, there feels to be a lot of constraints. And what was really wonderful about this project, I had just had the opportunity to just express myself and kind of bring all of myself to a project and uh, I'm really just experiment and if things went wrong it was okay um, and that's what I really enjoyed and really appreciated and also just working with uh, yourself and Tia Monique um, you know I obviously I know you both but we haven't worked you know in a kind of project setting before and um I think this was a real opportunity to get to know you both um, as researchers, as academics in your, in your work, um, in practice. And, uh, and also as well, I think people who from the outside looking in um, were really getting a lot from the three of us together. I think there was something very powerful um, about us working together. And I, I think we've made an impression. Well, I know we've made an impression and, and the work that has been produced over the course of this year has just been really, really powerful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'd really agree with that, that the, it's the work, isn't it? What yeah. do you think, Tim? Yeah, I agree as well. I feel like, um, yeah, it's the work and, and what we've been able to put out there um, and everyone's been able to consume and it's been really good. And also I feel like the process that we've all been through, being together as three black women at different stages in our lives, different stages in our career has been so, so powerful for me, um, especially coming out of often predominantly white spaces where you're always feeling like, do I know the cultural codes or how do I work in a team? I felt like a lot of that has just not been present and that's been a really freeing and liberating space. I feel like, you know, our journey together hasn't always been easy, but we've really moved forward in grace and been able to um, be held accountable by each other, to cover each other, to protect each other. And that's been, um, yeah, for me, really, really important as a way of doing work together um, and moving through academia. Like, there can be other ways that are closer to my cultural values and what I hold, you can do that. And so that's been really, really powerful. Yeah. I think it's, it's interesting you saying about the different career stages because actually, um, I mean, I've been a, a geographer for a really long time now, probably nearly 30 years or so. Um, and I guess up until this time, I'd sort of thought, right, I am, uh, I'm on my own in, you know, in terms of just kind of being a, being a black geographer. So I've kind, of, I've kind of been able to say what I wanted to say at times, but also been very cautious. I've got used to keeping things private, right? You know, so things that might upset me or things that I think, um, where I think, oh, I, I'm on my own again with that, you know, or if I don't say that, nobody's going to say that type things. Um, I've been used to just keeping that myself. That's upset me, but I, it's myself, you know. Whereas I think um, one of the things that I've really learned this year with, with Carrie Cook has been to, uh, to actually share some of that and share some of that vulnerability um, with people where I think, okay, uh, if I say this to you, that upset me and this is why, I've got a good chance that you'll understand why that happens. You know, not to say I've got very many good friends within geography and we've talked about things, of course we have, but it's, it's that sort of feeling that you can say something that the other person is gonna say, yeah, I get that, I get that, you know, uh, without feeling that I've got to sort of bottle all that up, you know, like keep it within. Uh, and that's been incredibly sort of hopeful for me because I feel like, 
other people coming after me won't have to feel like they have to develop this kind of thick carapace. You know, that's how I felt at times, that I have to develop quite a thick carapace. <laughs> I can't be vulnerable um, or soft, because if I am, I'll have to go. I'll, you know, I'll get pushed out, like I've seen so many people get pushed out. Um, so, yeah, uh, Carrie Cook's been... Um, it's really taught me a lot, even at, at my career stage, that actually I can be vulnerable. Uh, quite a big lesson for me. Yeah, that's really beautiful. It's reminding me of Brené Brown. She talks about something like strong back, soft front. Yeah. And I think that's it, how to be in community with each other. Yeah. Um, because you do need to have a strong back. And what we've done, we have in, in ways pushed back um, and confronted some things in, in all of our work um, and it takes a strong back to do that but we don't want to lose our humanities we don't want to be part of we, we're in the system but we want to participate in a different way yes I think that's a, that's the thing really about it's been very hopeful to have enough enough black people of different kinds to be able to say okay within that you can also be yourself yeah. you don't have to be the black geographer <laughs> Yeah. But you can be, what, you know, just Pat, you know, who is amongst other black geographers and you don't have to be the one. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite important. That's been important for, for black women anyway, you know, that sort of sense of the strong black woman where you have to be the person who's holding everybody up all the time and supporting them. Um, once you then get to meet with other black women, then you don't have to be that person. Yeah. You know, not, you're not the only one, you're sharing the load, right? And that, that seems to me really important. Yeah. And I think that's been really important for me as well as someone who is not necessarily a geographer and in geography, I'm yeah. interdisciplinary, working in dance and performance make mostly, and then also engaging with geography in that feeling that I didn't have to be, you're always saying, Tia, just be the dance person, don't be the, the geography person when I'm approaching anything. And I think that's, I felt so empowered to bring that interdisciplinary nature into my work, into whatever I'm doing with Carrie Cook, making it as creative as I wanted to be in the branding and the marketing and everything, and um, not feeling that I have to subscribe to my ideas of what it might mean like, be like to, um, be a postdoctoral <laughs> research fellow in a geography department. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've had that sort of hybridity a little bit, Rita, isn't it? Because you're, you're in the final year of doing your PhD, whilst at the same time being a researcher on a, on a project like this. It's a fairly unusual position. I don't know how, you've, how you found it. Yeah, I mean, it has, but in a way, you know, it's, it's kind of come at a good time in a way. I think... Um, I think this whole situation with the lockdown and everything is kind of, in a way, it's kind of suspended time. So it doesn't feel like normal times. Mm. So um, it's kind of, you kind of lose track of even what year it is sometimes. And um, as I said, I, I feel like this has really, because it's coming out of uh, the reading group of Global Black Geographies, the project that I was working on, I feel like I'm, you know, there's a community, a wider community of, of, people doing scholarly work, geography work, um, and that, you know, I'm feeding into that and I'm part of that. And I think what's really exciting about the three of us working together is that we are, I guess, representative of a, of a growing community of, of black geographers sort of based here in the UK, all have connections to the UK. And I think that's what's exciting. It's a conversation that we're having in the round, not just with each other, but also with others. And we're not having to do the explanation. Um, but to be honest, I found it really inspiring because I feel it's really important. I think we can't underestimate how difficult it is. And Kanika brought up that how difficult it is kind of being a black student in a UK campus and just feeling kind of out of out of kind of out of your comfort zone and in a strange place. Not only in a strange place, but also at a strange time. And the research project actually kept me very grounded in a weird kind of way. It kind of kept me grounded in, in this kind of reality that I'm a, I'm a postgraduate research student. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you kind of feel like I don't even know where I am at the moment. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're just going from one Zoom to the next, you know? It's like, where am I? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really interesting, that reflection on being a student as well, because we, that's one of the things that we've picked up this week, uh, this over Caricut fortnight, this last couple of weeks, is about um, being, a, being a black person connected with the academy at various stages, um, you know, being a student, being, we're now thinking about black academic careers, you know, um, being in the countryside, uh, publishing, you know, all those different kind of moments. How do you get to be, um, to be who you are? You know, to, as, as a lots of people have said, to bring your whole self mm. uh, and not, ha not feel like you have to carve out little bits that you bring and then you leave everything else behind. Um, and that's been a really interesting kind of ongoing conversation, I guess, throughout, of Cari throughout Cari Cook has been, how do, you, how do you get to bring your whole self um, to anything that you're doing within the academy? Yeah. Should we move on to question two? Uh, just uh, squinting at the time. So what have been the effects of having relative autonomy to complete a beautiful experiment? And I think what you'll need to do is tell people what the beautiful experiment is and then tell them about um, what, what have been the effects of that. So shall we start with you, Tia Monique? Yeah, so my um, beautiful experiment started really a long time ago when I was training in Senegal and thinking about um, my connection to the land and because the training centre there is so gorgeous, dancing on sand and um, dancing by the sea and in the sea and with trees and in the studio as well. And um, when Pat had this opportunity to um, apply for this funding, we spoke about what I might do. And I was really wanting to have an opportunity to create something out of all my training because I actually retrained, um, not retrained, but added onto my training from contemporary dance to include more Africanist practice from 2014 onward. Before that, I was exclusively contemporary trained. And so this film started to come about as an idea um, of me really exploring that relationship between um, going into the countryside and being in the natural environment in the UK compared to when I was in West Africa and um, in the Caribbean from in Jamaica, um, where my parents are from. Um, well, one parent is from Barbados. The other is from Jamaica. I just have to make sure I <laughs> make those clarities. Um, so, so I made a film that was really exploring three dark-skinned black women um, in the natural environment scenes in the mud, scenes in the grass, scenes in the water. And um, the film is called The Noise My Leaves Make. And it's, uh, the title is inspired um, from a little part of Derek Walcott's essay, Isla Incognito, which is talking, him talking about the kind of violence that brought him to St. Lucia and how that violence was also subjected onto the land. Um, the renaming and reclaiming and repurposing of the land. And at the end, he talks about how he has to claim the land. Um, he talks about his feet diving down and taking hold of the land um, by desperation and necessity. Not necessarily because that's what he wants to do, but, that's, but because that's where he finds himself. And so the film is really my expression of that, of we find ourselves here. How do you demand belonging in a space that you've been excluded from, that you might feel hostility from, that you might not feel welcome, you don't see yourself reflected? You might see yourself there, but you don't see the same kind of joy that I experience when I'm training in Senegal or dancing in Nigeria or with my family in Jamaica. Um, and so the film premiered uh, I feel like it was last week. Yes. <laughs> it's such a long week. It's this week. Um, it's been a long week. Um, we've done so much in such a short amount of time that it, it premiered this week, and the response was really, really overwhelming to me, and I think I haven't really had a chance to truly understand um, what's happened, but I think I can speak to what it's meant for me to be able to express myself 
in a way that I really, really wanted to, but didn't have an opportunity to because of my ideas of what it has meant to um, be an academic and how being an artist and the, and the way that I've approached artistry wasn't, didn't um, meet. They couldn't, those two things couldn't meet. Um, so yeah, Carrie Cook has really given me a safe space to try and wrestle with some of these ideas and bring, bring out my inner creative life and try to fashion out the kind of academic career that I really want to have. Um, and in that, I feel like I have a stronger identity. Like, going through this whole process, I feel like I've now kind of taken hold of the type of academic I want to be, and I can move forward with that. Whereas after my PhD, to be honest with you, lots of things happened, and I felt really lost. I felt like I didn't know how to be in this weird world of academia. I felt like, in a lot of ways, like, swept up into, like, the flow of it. I think especially because... I got my first postdoc with Dunham's Data, which is an amazing project. I got it really quickly. After a quite traumatic event, I didn't have time to really think. And what Carrie Cook enabled me was time to really sit down and, and um, yeah, really fashion out the space that I wanted to, to take hold of the space in the way that I wanted to, rather than just like getting swept up into the machine. Um, and not just... I feel like in some ways I'm always like looking to the academy to be like, oh, do I belong here? Can I make it? Will I survive? I'm always asking those questions. Um, and through this project, getting to manage people, like practical skills like that I didn't have as an early career, um, taking people through a process from beginning to the end, sharing my vision, communicating my vision, executing that, and then sharing it with everybody else. I learned so much, and um, more than anything, I created a community where I could be safe. And instead of me looking to the academy to be like, do I belong here? Will I survive? Will I make it? Do I have the skills? Do I have the talent? I don't need to ask those questions there. They don't even come up in the kind of community that I feel like I've created and we've created as, as Carrie Cook. And I feel the same thing, that things, things can go wrong, but I can be held accountable to that community and I can be vulnerable and I don't have to feel like oh me making this mistake is like is going to affect every other black person <laughs> that that comes into this space like that kind of burden of representation is not um present in those spaces because the incredibly rich and creative spaces they're soft spaces and um they're safe spaces and I feel like, not just safe spaces, but they're brave spaces, spaces that you can really try something and experiment and, um, you know, not be given the side eye kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I feel, like, so much more bold. Mm. And even, like, for my next endeavours, I, I feel like I have a clarity of, like, what I need in order to continue to be in academia. Mm. And I and I. I know now how to like demand those things for myself and not just for myself, but for others that also feel marginalized in academia. Yeah. And so I feel really empowered, it's, it's meant a lot. That's great. I think that that sort of sense that, I really love that idea that you know what you kind of want to have rather than sort of waiting to see what will people give me yeah. or what will, what will I have available? What will people make available to me? It's kind of being able to face academia and say, actually, this is, this is what I want from an academic role. This is, yeah. this is who I want to be in that role. I don't want to pretend to be somebody else. Mm. This is who I want to be. And I think that really helps with the idea of the beautiful experiments because, uh, you know, Sadia Hartman's idea of a uh, phrasing of these beautiful experiments, um, which is how she understands um, the lives of black women who were classified in the US um, historically uh, by sort of social workers and probation officers and police officers and mm. as kind of wayward women who, uh, so they, their lives were, um, if we le read their lives in the archives, it's all um, a kind of negative boxing in. But Sadia Hartman is sort of says, actually, in that context, you live your life as an experiment. Mm. And um, 
you know, if we reread those lives in the archives, we can see that those are beautiful experiments. Those are women who are pushing the boundaries of those boxes. Those are women who are, you know, pushing, working across those boxes and, and in ways that are wayward, you know, because they're not following the line mm. that's expected of them. And uh, I guess, you know, I really like that fact, that idea that you're kind of approaching academia now as what can I, um, what sort of life do I want to live as an mm. academic? Uh, and it doesn't have to be within that box. It doesn't have yeah. to be that I'm doing it wrong uh, yeah. because I'm not the same. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really important. It's something that I kind of really want to continue to generate this sense that anybody actually, black women, working class people, that we can actually approach the academy in our own way as ourselves mm -hmm. and ask it to, to be our academy. You know, yeah. That seems really important to me. Rita, what's your kind of uh, take on that? You know, what have been the effects of having some relative autonomy to complete a beautiful experiment? Tell us about your beautiful experiment and then tell us what's done. Well, um, the beautiful experiment was uh, the Global Black Geography Zine, a multilingual uh, site uh, which hosted uh, critical conversations from black writers and creatives from around the world. And it came out of, or is part of uh, the, the reading group that I'm a part of, a network of, of global black geographers. Um, We've been in a reading group uh, for, uh, since uh, 2019. And then we got this opportunity to, you know, through Carrick UK um, to, to produce uh, the website, the zine. And uh, I think I said this before, but, um, you know, I never thought an opportunity would come to sort of do this right now at this side of the PhD. So it was kind of like an opportunity. And maybe in the past, I'd be like, oh, my gosh, am I ready to do this? But it was like, you know, I can't miss this. You know, I knew it was like, I can't miss this moment. And I didn't know if I was ready to do it. But I thought, you know, I have to be ready. You know, I'm going to just see what happens. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, that was the wonderful thing that, you know, it is a risk. It's risk taking, isn't it? You're doing something and... I was working with translators, you know, it's a multilingual site. I only speak and write in one language, so I'm totally out of my comfort zone. Um, but what I found uh, over the course of this project was that I brought in all of those past experiences and my career experiences, working in media, working in teaching and retail and customer service and you know all those things that you kind of are there on your cv that you don't really talk about now unless someone mentions it right an agency they're like oh you used to do this and oh you used to do that and i'm like oh yeah and it's like but you bring all of that stuff with you right and it was you know when the site went up so it's it's a week so the so the whole process of doing it actually and also what was fortunate for me because i was part of a reading group i always had people in the reading group to, to, to kind of refer to. And so uh, two members of the reading group, uh, Lombe and Lena, uh, delivered articles uh, for uh, the Global uh, Black Geography zine. And I feel like this zine was kind of people I knew or people who I'd admired. So I was able to kind of like, can you, can you speak to something? And, and also not only was it a beautiful experiment for myself, but also for the contributors, because mm. I didn't say you needed to do this. I just said, well, we're doing this and can you provide something and what's on your mind? And they're like, well, what do you want? I said, well, what are you doing? You know, it's this kind of like back and forth thing. And like, I said, well, you can write about whatever you want, like ever, anything I want. I was like, yeah, just write something. I said, the only constraint I have are sort of the word count mm -hmm. uh, and the time, of course, you need to deliver it by this date. Yeah, that's, that's not, that's a kind of hard demand. Mm -hmm. um, and it was freeing for everybody involved, you know? I think when you have, when you're working in an environment where you kind of have that freedom to kind of express yourself, it's like you're able to then gift it to others. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So that they start writing in a different way and you start to see the work coming in and then you speak to the translators and they say, well, how do you want it done? I said, well, how do you want to do it? Well, I thought I may do this. Like, okay, let's try it. And so they start experimenting and they come back with something and then you go to the web designer and like, how do you want to do it? How do you want to do it? Well, we could do it like this way, we could do it this way. You know, it's like this constant like whirl. And then you post the website and everybody's like, oh my God, is this it? You know, you know, and I saw it, I was shocked. <laughs> <by it. laughs> 
you know, it's that shocking thing of like, oh my God, you know, we, we did it, you know? Yeah. And it was such a beautiful journey. Um, and like the first thing people said, oh, when are you doing the next one, right? <laughs> so it's that kind of like, you know, you know, but it's like been thinking about this zine for so long. It's like it's been in my mind from the time we set up Global Glidrographies. And I've got to give a shout out to Agostino Pinnock, who's just this brilliant personality, force of nature that, you know, I'm glad, so glad that if I, the things we were talking about, Global Black Geographies, people didn't really get it. And it's like, now they see something, it's like, ah, okay, it's, it's this, and it's a bit of this, and it's this, but everyone sees something different, yeah. which is what it, it's meant to be, right? It's the diversity of, of our humanity as Black people, right? We are very, very different, and that's okay. We're gonna celebrate it. Whatever you come with, it's fine. Just bring it, come as yourself, you know? Mm. Come as you are, because I'm coming as I am. And I want people to have that freedom to do that and having the, the privilege of being able to provide the opportunity in the way that this project has provided it to me mm. has been just amazing. And, you know, I just feel like I was kind of full on before Pat, but now it's like, I'm going to the next level now. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, <laughs> I don't know if the Academy's big enough for me, Pat. You know what I mean? I'm being serious now. You know, it's like, I don't, my attitude right now is I don't need to be in the Academy. Mm. For real, you know? Yeah. It's like, I don't need them. I can do this. It can be done. It will be done. We're going to do it anyway. That's my attitude. We're going to do it anyway. Yeah. So you can either get on board or we're going to keep it moving, you know? Yeah, thank you. We, we've, we've talked, myself and you, Rita, quite a lot, haven't we, about that, the idea of a kind of para-academic spaces that are opening up on the, on the internet. And uh, it's kind of a, it is a, a moment where it's sort of, you know, in terms of black academic careers, it's like, is the academy uh, big enough? Is it ready for us? Uh, is, it, is it our kind of space? Mm -hmm. And if it's, if it's not ready for us and if it's not our kind of space, we actually have some choices now about where we do black, in, black intellectual work. And I think um, you know, that's quite important for academic institutions to understand um, that they don't, uh, they don't corner the market on intellectual work uh, anymore. The internet's out there and people can express themselves for free, you know, in their own ways as well. Um, so yeah, a lot more choices for us. Okay, so I'm, a, I'm aware people will be thinking, when are they going to stop talking and when are we going to be able to talk? So I just want to give you, to give you sort of, give us kind of five more minutes to start, the, start thinking about future agendas. Because we've called this, this event Carrie Cook's Agendas for black academic careers. And that's where we want to kind of have that discussion. I just want to say, um, Sonia Barrett has said on here, I have to echo Tia Monique, Carrie Cook is like an arc for black intellects. I like that, an arc for black intellects. That's fantastic. Um, Sonia says, awesome, Rita. And Azizat says, come as you are, because I'm coming as I am. Nice. A line from Rita. <laughs> nice. um, so what I'd like us to just finish with is to think about that. The, the future agendas that have been laid down by Carrie Cook. What do you think our agendas are and where do you see them as going? Do you want to start, Timoni? Um, let me start. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think one of the gender agendas is, you know, um, I think it's uh, a really exciting time to be a black scholar here in the UK Academy. And I know often we talk about uh, the challenges and they're, they're real, but they are real in any industry. The Academy is not an exception in that. But I think if you have research, there's a topic that you're very excited by, the stories that you want to bring, I think this is the moment to, to do that. Um, and also as well, I think I'm really excited about geography as a subject. You know, I came to geography quite late, uh, really coming in from kind of moving image, visual media, uh, cultural studies, and then uh, to cultural geography. And I think it must be a very interesting time to be black undergraduate BA, BSc geography student right now in the UK Academy. 
I think it's a very exciting time and you look at work like the, the black uh, uh, geographies, the uh, postgraduates who are doing great things here. I think people are excited um, and I think it's hopeful. It's hopeful, it's hopeful. And, and what happens is when you have a, a group of people who are doing exciting work, it, it just raises the bar path. It raises the bar, you're excited. And I think it will help keep people in the academy who may have been thinking about leaving, mm. who may have been thinking about doing something else. And I think, I hope, and I think the Carrick UK, I think one of our legacies is that we inspire black, black academics to stay in the academy. In the UK Academy, we, we encourage them to stay and that there is great work that can be done yeah. and there are people here for you to work with. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a great point, that feeling that you can stay. So earlier in the year when I was um, uh, given an award by... I didn't just drop it. I was given, <laughs> given an award by the... Drop World it, Geographical drop Society. it, drop it. <laughs> and um, I, they asked me to make a short film and, and one of the things that came to me as somebody who's black but also from a working class background, low income background, is that, you know, you have to stay in, in a discipline like geography long enough until it can deserve you. Mm. That's quite important, right? You know, because there's a certain moment where actually you think there's just damage. And, and, and I think there is a moment when people do have to leave. I think there is a moment when people have to go because the, it's just not, one shouldn't stay and be damaged. You know, I don't think it's worth it, actually. But there, but there is, I think, if we can get enough people, a kind of, uh, enough people here, enough of a sense that there's real diversity, enough of a sense that we're actually moving with some real change, that's really gonna happen and we're in there with it, you know, feeling that sense of it. Um, then I think it's possible for that, even a discipline that began, and you know, and, and geography, geographers are very clear about, began in that colonial moment, uh, with that colonial logic, even within that kind of discipline, if we stay long enough, we can, if we can get to a point where we can bring our whole self, then you get to that a moment where actually you've got a truly diverse discipline, mm. where people are welcome, where there's different points of view, and actually then it starts to be, as you say, real pleasure to be here, a kind of real joy uh, of geography. And that's where, that's where I think Karakuk is a kind of, for me, it's a kind of vision of getting there. I'm not saying we're there. <laughs> I'm not saying we're there. But I, th I think there's a, there's a possibility. There's a, it's just on the horizon. Right? That It's not just about Karakuk. We haven't done that. I think we're part of a much larger movement of black geography and various other things, post-colonial geographies, BLM, you know, Black Lives Matter, everything else. Um, but we're, we've done our part within the discipline, and I think that the conditions for having a, a project like this available come out of a particular kind of moment of hope. Um, and the agenda is really to keep that momentum, right? Keep it moving forward, not retreat back into sort of reactionary or activistic kind of um, politics. Is there anything you want to add? Or? Yeah, I think the thing that I've really been thinking about as um, somebody in a dance discipline and engaging with geography is how um, the funding bodies, this is an example for funding bodies to see how creative work um, and artistry translates across the academy. I feel like often our work is so hard to be, not, it's not hard to be funded, but funders find it hard to fund our work because it's, well, what are you gonna do? And I mean, even with this project, there was a question around my, my part. It was like, I can't remember the feedback, but it was something like, well, what is this actually gonna be? And I think, I hope that through the film and not just my film, but the other artistic provocations, that it'll be an example to the AHRC, the whoever, whoever's, the British Academy, the Levy Hume, et cetera, that they should be funding um, and bringing in artists, bringing in creative provocations as part of the conversation, as a starting point of a conversation um, around a number of issues so I feel like this project has contributed to that conversation because I really feel like 
the visuals, the kind of outputs that we've had, because we actually haven't done a lot of writing, mm. if any. No, we haven't lost time. We haven't had time to do any writing, but we've done a lot. We've created a lot. And um, we've had a huge impact across the world. It's translated, our, and a lot of our work is responding to things that are happening in the UK, across the diaspora, but it's translated across. And to me, that's just proof of what, when you add in artistry, what it can do. Yeah. So fund us. <laughs> I think that's the thing. Give us the know, money. Obviously. Give us the money. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the thing. It's kind of geography. That you know, the, the a longer term agenda is thinking of rethinking what we understand as geographical knowledge, mm. right? You know, that geographical knowledge isn't always. I mean, obviously, within the word geography, there is a kind of writing of the world. It isn't always about text. It isn't always about writing. That like you can you know, understand the world via the body, that you can understand the world via, you know, kind of beautiful images and, you know, kind of a, a sound. And there are lots of different forms of knowledge. And it's about how we value that, you know, through funding, but just through kind of status as well, you know, having a sense that that is actual knowledge. Yeah. It's not just something that, you know, you then write about to turn it into knowledge. Actually, embodied practice, creative practice, is actually knowledge in and of itself. I think that's, until we get to that point, it's hard to understand kind of black intellectual endeavor, mm -hmm. because a lot of black intellectual endeavor has been embodied work, mm -hmm. uh, historically. And it's about, you know, kind of how do we actually really value that? Okay, thank you ever so much, you two, as Hi, usual. I have a question. Yeah, you, come on. What does it mean for you to have done this beautiful experiment? Do you know what? I think it's, um, it's, it's been a lot of joy. It's been mm. a lot of joy. I think I've kind of... Uh, I'm quite tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, And, you know, there's all of the things that come with it. You get frustrated, you get angry, you get, like, all oh, the vision and... But, the, you know... But, but at the same time, working with so many creative people, being able to offer people an opportunity, um, and seeing what they do with it, you know, is really, really joyful. You know, mm. the idea that there are things in existence, like your film, uh, like Rita Zine, like many of the, the beautiful creative things, you know, Sonia's, uh, Sonia Barrett's Dreading the Map, the idea that those things are in existence now because we've been able, I've been able to get the money together and work with people and they've been able to create these fantastic things. It's pure joy, yeah. you know, there's pure joy to be able to do that. Um, I've, I need to think more about the intersections between academic work, you know, being an academic and working with creative people whose careers are very different from mine, their cre career trajectories are very different, and how we walk together for mutual benefit, you know, kind of how, how uh, I assist in a creative career. Um, so there were, it's, it's made me realize there are things to learn, um, but there's such a lot of joy in that creativity, um, being able to unleash it and just watch it go, you know, watch it go. Uh, fantastic, really. So yeah, that's been the big thing for me, is to, um, to get out of this sense that we work with creative people just so that they can illustrate some of our great ideas mm. as academics, but to, to get to the point where we actually really understand that the, what they are producing is, is knowledge, and that we work in a co-creation of knowledge production that's genuinely, um, genuinely a dialogue, genuinely an inequality, and equality. Um, yeah, really important, becoming really passionate about that now that I can recognize that um, that genuinely can happen. So, yeah, it's about drawing down that funding, it's about making it happen, yeah, but, but yeah, that's what the year's been to me, uh, a kind of shift in my understanding. Mm. Yeah. It's really powerful. Thank you for you, Monique. <laughs> People just keep talking back to me. Like, oh, it's not right. <laughs> You're not just going to ask questions up here. <laughs> this is the new academy. We can ask questions absolutely, again. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, why not? Yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much to, um, to the Carrie Cook team. It's been a real pleasure working with you this year. We're going to...
come back to some of these questions in the discussion in a moment, but I want to, to turn to Sarah, if you, Sarah Evans from the Royal Geographical Society, who's going to um, give a few words on behalf of the society. Thank you, Pat. Uh, I first want to take the opportunity to recognise Pat for inviting the society to be partners on this project and to thank Pat, Rita, Tia Monique, Sonia, Chadwick, and all the other artists and contributors for including us in their discussions, interventions, and all that has happened through this project over the last year. At the outset, our commitment for this project was to open the society, to open up the building, to open the historic collections and our networks. And in doing so, to link back to and build upon a programme of work extending back over the last 20 years, from the Unlocking the Archives project onwards, which has focused on opening up the society's building, the collections, the organisation and the discipline of geography. So we were delighted to host Dreading the Map, um, in which surplus maps from the collections were shredded and braided using African hair care techniques, and then transformed into a beautiful, compelling and troubling sculpture that in its turn transformed the map room in which it was created we, we collaborated on teaching resources, working alongside the Geographical Association to use our shared networks to get these out to schools and used by teachers. We opened the building and the collections to film black geographers and their responses to and in this space. And we spoke about these initiatives through our publications, our social media and our lecture programmes. But most importantly, uh, at the outset, we committed to listen, to reflect and to change. Over the last year, and on numerous occasions, this stage, this building, these spaces have been filled with black geographers and with music, poetry and laughter, with reflections, provocations and challenges. Both in those activities directly with us and in the broader programme of work, it has been such a privilege to hear a diversity of black voices and of black experiences. For this institution, Carrickook has done many things. It has reminded us of the potential of creative arts practice. That's in terms of the wonderful outputs themselves, which are critically important in and of themselves and which need to leave a lasting legacy in this building. But equally, if not more importantly, it's in terms of the collaborative process that brought them into being, the activities through which those creations were shaped and made. It's about the conversations that were enabled and the perspectives and values that were shifted and changed. Dreading the Map was an incredibly powerful example of that. Karakuk has also reminded us of the critical importance of engaging young people and of enabling them to see their own experiences reflected in the geographies that they study. And finally, it has emphasised the many dimensions of structural exclusion that persist in our schools, in our universities and in this institution, and the securities and insecurities that underpin these. As James Essen noted in last Friday's conversation, these spaces are not diverse by design. They were built that way. Listening to the conversations over the last fortnight, across the three previous events and tonight, we could hear a common theme emerging of what it means to navigate these alienating and often hostile spaces, whether that's the UK higher education sector, the English countryside, or organisations like this one, like the RGSIBG. But also a common theme too about belonging, about what it means to belong, and about the possibilities of building and claiming that sense of community and belonging. As we've also heard over the last two weeks, that's also about the importance of decentering certain perspectives and centering others. The importance of being inclusive of a whole range of different ways of knowing and of valuing experience in and beyond the academy. And throughout, there has been that sense of openness, of generosity, of willingness to create the space to have these challenging and often uncomfortable conversations. It's been Pat's leadership in creating the space for this supported discomfort, which has been echoed across the whole Karakuk team and all those taking part in the project. We know there is much work ahead for this organisation. What does this look like? What will change? Change in an institution such as this will be slow. Slower than I would like, and certainly slower than the Karakuk team or many of you listening would like. But it will happen, catalysed by projects such as this. We are committed to continuing and funding a multi-year programme of research-led creative projects modelled on Karakuk and drawing on that openness, that generosity, that willingness to make space, to have uncomfortable conversations and to create beautiful and provocative art. These will leave a legacy on the walls of this building. 
Importantly, they will also be supported by programmes of activities to make these spaces more permeable, less well-armoured, in Pat's phrase, both for black scholars and for others who are underrepresented in geography and in this institution. This is part of our broader commitments to give more prominence to our existing work and to open up space for scrutiny, challenge and dialogue on where we go from here. So thank you once again for your generosity and for the challenge you give us to do better. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, so it's been a joy being in partnership with the Royal Geographical Society. I mean, they are the Royal Geographical Society, and um, you know everybody knows that there are changes that need to be made. Uh, not mo no one more than the Royal Geographical Society. I mean, they kind of know. Um, but I've also, uh, I guess, over the year, seen uh, that there's a combination of different publics um, to which the Royal Geographical Society is. Um, uh, I guess the word is. Uh, has, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Has a stake, you know? So there are lots of different people coming with different stakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's quite a lot to negotiate, quite a lot to juggle in there. I recognise all of that. But I guess, you know, one of the things that we've, we've come, I think, with Carrie Cook, with a challenge that is really about, you know, how do you stay relevant uh, in the 21st century? Uh, and what you don't do, of course, is kind of tuck yourself away in Kensington and, and do the same thing and defend doing that thing. You have to change. Um, otherwise, the society around you changes and leaves you behind. Mm. And uh, I think that that's the, that's the difficult balance. It's the difficult balance for the, for the RGS, um, who have been very keen in their partnership, I think, because they recognise that too. Uh, it's the balance for the discipline of geography as well which, although geography is right at the cutting edge of the things that are going to really concern us in our future, uh, climate change, which is enormously important for the Caribbean and other places right now, um, but, you know, it's creeping up on some of the most powerful countries in the world. Climate change is, is really important. Geography is really important for that. But at the, at the same time, we do have that colonial past. We're dragging that behind us. Uh, and if we're going to be a discipline for the future, um, we've really got to move. So it's not really a case of, you know, it's great to think of this partnership as something that has been a kind of happy partnership that we've shared together, which we have, but it's really about necessity. It's really about having um, projects like these, which will push the agenda somewhat so that changes will have to happen. Uh, otherwise, this kind of thing will be left behind, I think, because the world is changing around it. Okay, so we've got a few things on the chat and then I'm going to open up to um, the curated audience. Whoops, messing up my laptop. So, uh, yeah, Rita says, thank you so much. Carrie Cook has been a joy. Um, Barana Palmer says, thank you, Pat, Rita and Tia Monique for creating and taking up space to produce so much beauty and joy. Oh, Lisa, Lisa says this. So uh, thank you so much, Lisa. All right, so what I'd like to do now is um, move towards the uh, curated audience. I really appreciate the people who are making comments on YouTube as well. Please do carry on doing that, and we'll, we'll keep coming back round to you. So if you have uh, questions and agendas of your own, uh, please feel free to, to place those. I'll just remind you of the, of the questions for our discussion, which are, um, firstly, you know, what does a project like this give us in terms of agency uh, for black people? It's a project that's been led by three black women. What does this give us in terms of agency, both working together as teams and individually as black academics? Secondly, what have been the effects of having uh, relative autonomy to complete a beautiful experiment? How might we create that sort of space uh, in the future? What might be the benefits of doing so? And then thirdly, what do we see as the future agendas, future effects that have been laid down by a project like Carrie Cook? Where do we see these kinds of uh, conversations going in the future? So the big question really is, uh, what are our agendas for black academic futures? And I'm thinking really within academic institutions, and we do need to think about that, the academic institutions that we're navigating, but also beyond them, you know, 
what are our futures as black academics within and beyond uh, the academy. So uh, if we can open up to the, uh, to the Zoom, that would be great. I should mention that we're being very well supported by a, a technical team um, up in the box at the top there who are really helping us this evening. We're used as Carrie Cook to running all of this ourselves. And uh, kind of usually, it's usually Tia Monique who's paddling along um, underneath doing all the technical stuff and then looking <laughs> swan-like at the top, kind of joining in with the conversation. So it's great to have uh, support this evening and we're, we're very thankful for that. So thank you very much, Alfredo and Veronica. So uh, lovely to see you all and I see that there are hands up already, fantastic. Um, our curated audience has been with us the whole time. I haven't, unfortunately, prepared a list of names because I, I've just not been that organized. I do apologize, but it, they, the names will go on our website um, afterwards, and I think we can probably put it in the comments, isn't it? Um, so, Agostino, we'll start with you. This is Agostino Pinnock. Um, do, do let us have your question or comment. Uh, yeah, uh, first off, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, you all look so great under, under the lights, really. Uh, so thank you so much for having me. Um, first off, I really want to say, though, congratulations, Pat, and Tia, and Rita, for this really brilliant project. You know, uh, you talk about the three black women working together. So in a way, the kind of the radicality of that alone, but also the work, you know, the work that you do. You know, Rita has a way of saying, that we really know people through their work. And I think if that statement holds, we can say with a certain amount of reasonableness that, you know, we have now come to recognize that the three of you are very serious and you're very committed. And I feel very privileged to be part of that in some small way. Uh, I'm really excited for the idea of the beautiful experiment being extended across these different spaces so that we can begin to talk about very serious things. And one of the things that you said, Pat, that struck me um, is how you said, for example, that you've been in geography for about 30 years. And you know, just before this discussion, Rita and I were talking about that. And I said to her how profound it was for me to have learned uh, at the RGS in, in 2019, how you basically were like one of two, if not the only black person and black woman uh, in the RGS, and I thought, my God, this is such a courageous kind of, of act, you know, the dedication, and it's so great to see that it is now blossoming and turning into something more meaningful where there are more critical numbers involved. And so you talked about, as a working class woman, um, you know, your, your, your being able to be vulnerable, you know, with, say, Rita and Tia, and I thought that that was so profound. You know, because it's so important for us to, as you say, to show up as our whole selves. Mm. You know, it's so easy. I was just recently reading a paper where somebody made a comment about Bob Marley uh, and the Whalers about the rebel trio. And, you know, I pointed out to them that, you know, those words are so easy to say, but they're, there's a kind of way that they stereotype black people as somehow constantly being in conflict and therefore, in a way, justifies the kind of violence that we read about in, say, in the U.S. and other parts of the world. So, you know, I mean, I don't know if I have anything significant to add to the discussion, really, other than to just say how, you know, brilliant it is to see this event unfold and to hear yourself uh, speak so uh, feelingly about what it has meant for you to work on a project like this. So, you know, I mean, bravo, as they say at the opera. <laughs> I think I'll wrap up by saying that because I know it's easy that over there is itching to add something very meaningful to uh, so yes over to you Aziza no honestly it's more of the same so like <laughs> we're just gonna we're all gonna do it you know just <laughs> adding on the flattery um, no one it's just so, it's so lovely um, to see you, um, like I needed to make an appearance, you know, like, um, I'm not, it's not no surprise to me that it's because of Pat that I would even virtually return to the RGS. Um, and I think it's really important to talk about like the kind of work that goes on behind the scenes, um, to, it was just really satisfing as well, Agostino, when you were talking about that work blossoming, 
Um, because for years, <laughs> when I started my PhD, Pat was telling me, don't be a, cri there's been a critical mass. We're coming together. It's happening. It's happening. Um, and it was a lot harder to believe then than it is to believe now, which is, which is really beautiful in and of itself, you know? Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, the one of the many kind of beautiful experiments that I, I love and I, I missed out on, like, actually seeing live was um, the Sonia E. Barrett, like, dreading the map installation. I've already spoken about, like, all of the reasons why Rita and Tia Monique are, like, doing all of the things. So, like, I'm just going to, you know, like, you know this in my heart that I feel this for you guys. So I'm just going to, yeah, talk about a different project for a second. Because especially with you guys being, with some of you being in the RGS right now, um, I've spoken to Pat before about, like, thinking with dreaded geographies, you know, and what that does in terms of, like, the ripping up of these, like, maps that have been created that continuously constrain us into different imaginations and choosing to actually build systems of connection, choosing to honor systems of connection that are, like, based on hair care. Um, which we deserve, as we deserve, you know? Um, but one of the things that, that it does, does strike me within that is that, like, um, after the installation, like, went, um, the museum, like, not the museum, the map room where the installation was held, you know, like, it's, it stays, right? Like, it, that inst institution, um, that room stays, even as, like, the installation move somewhere else, you know? Um, and I'm going back and forth. I think it's important to like note, just because like for me, it, it kind of speaks to our mobility, our ability to be everywhere and anywhere. Um, that was one of the things that we were talking about in relation to Tia Monique's film, you know? It could be anywhere, like as Rita said, it could be any place, any time. Um, but also it, I think it teaches us some important things about taking on responsibility for like, the kind of education of like white dominated spaces, um, because actually what matters in the kind of building of the installation is the care work that happened beyond the installation. Mm. Um, and you know, like like everyone in the video um, that I watched like made such beautiful points in relation to that. But I guess that's also what I, I like when I'm thinking about beautiful experiments. When I'm thinking about the hope that I have for black geographies, it's because we're moving. You know, we're moving beyond the kind of expectation that, like, there will be any change <laughs> unless you actually, unless I see the change, I cannot believe the change, um, which is fine, but more, I deserve to, like, focus on care for myself um, and for those that I love, um, and that can be, that is enough, um, and that can be what, what inspires all of this academic work that, that any of us might do, you know? Um, so yeah, that's the main thing. Obviously, I have to talk about Pat a little bit because, like you know, there's just been so much support that. Pat <laughs> yeah, no, it has to be said. It has to be said, Pat. Like there's just been years of support, years, years, and years of support. Um, I don't think. I I know for a fact I wouldn't be an academic without. That's just a fact. I would not. I would not be an academic without you. Um, and it, it, it matters a lot that um, you know that, but also that you receive care as well from all of us, um, that like we see the amount of work that you've done alone at times in these rooms um, and can speak back and can, and can talk with more care, um, can offer softness, can offer ways to cushion some of the bruises that have happened along, along the ways as well. Um, so it means a lot to hear that hear that kind of softness being felt as well you know um i think it's really it's just really important so yeah i'll end up there thank you very much uh yeah i know what tia Manit was saying the other day that it's kind of overwhelming when people give you the feedback mm. back <laughs> kind of like you really <laughs> stop um yeah but it it is it's it is about i think for for me black geography starts from oh have we lost people for me, black geography starts from care. You know, it starts from caring about that person, you know, who, who is there and um, who is struggling. It's about trying to get a sense of that person actually really matters um, to me personally. You know, uh, I think that that's the thing. It's not just kind of mattering in, a, in an abstract sense that, you know, 
in a sort of humanist sense. It's about actually that individual there uh, is seen, is visible, because you know sometimes you walk into a room and it's and you you know it's you're the only black person in that room and there's two thousand people there. You you don't feel visible. Mm. Uh, and it's not just about who's in the room, it's also about what's on the walls, right? It's about kind of those portraits of, of you know, daring do and endeavour and you're not there. It's about all the books that have been written and you're not there. It's mm. about, you know, so it's kind of that, that sense of invisibility uh, really, really creeps up on you in the academy and it's really quite hard to fight um, because there's nothing in there that says... Pat, you're definitely there. And so, you know, we kind of, it starts from that starting point, I think. Uh, the idea of a black geography starts from how do we care for each other? How do we make each other feel visible um, and feel as if we matter? Uh, and I think once you've got, once you've started to make individuals feel that, then they start to group together and make each other feel like that. And then eventually you can have a lot of people feeling like they matter you're not walking into that room on your own. Um, so thank you very much. And Aziza always tells us about care, you know, uh, which uh, I think is really important, important because quite often in the academy, we talk a lot about um, excellence, you know, and about what we do, um, but not that sense that we, we need to care uh, about each other. Aziza always reminds us of that, which I really, really value. Yeah. Deb, over to you. Yeah, hi, thanks. Hi. Um, well, first, I guess I just want to say thank you for all of the events and for creating the community and for creating the space to have um, the kinds of questions that have been had. Um, so important. And, you know, to ground it in care means to see the whole being. And I think um, you're right, it's something that is so infrequently done within the academy generally, and then that has to be part of our intervention constantly. So I really appreciate that. Um, I wanted to just say two things that struck me and they're related. So one of the things that you said, um, Pat, today is that, and I'm looking over because I wrote it down, um, black intellectual production is embodied practice. You know, and you know that I agree, obviously, and that I feel very strongly about institutionalizing that, right? And um, as you're thinking about um, the future, right? And as we're all thinking about future agendas, that to me is so key. And it's really at the root of the center that, um, that we have here at Penn, the Center for Experimental Ethnography, that artistic practice is intellectual work and that embodied collaborative participatory ways of knowing are foundational to who we are and how we create community and understanding. And so one of the things I wanted to just pick up on, um, Azizat was talking about dreading the map and um, what happens when installations come down and these institutions are still there. Part of why I, I just so loved that installation and really wish that I could have experienced it in person um, was uh, coming out of something I've been thinking about a lot since I, uh, one of our fellows at the center last year was Reggie Wilson, who's a choreographer. And we taught a class together called Kinesthetic Anthropology. And he introduced me to this book called African Fractals. And so we were talking about the construction of knowledge within academic spaces as being Eurocentric, et cetera. And this book just blew everybody's mind because what it was giving was a sense of an alternative universal, right? So European knowledge becomes hegemonic because it positions itself as universal. And that's why we have the map, right? We have the categorizations, we have the evolutionary schemas, we have these, you know, glorious colonial buildings with the pictures where we're not included, as you were saying, right? But then the fractal is an alternative mode of organizing space. It is recursive, it is repetitive, and it suffuses various African societies um, 
in every dimension of life from the construction of communities to hair braiding. Mm -hmm. And so what was so important to me about that project was that the colonial knowledge was actually being reshaped through this alternative universal. And I think once that's done, it can never disappear, even if it is no longer in the space, you know? And so I, I love that intervention because I think it instantiates the thing that you're saying about um, once you create a space, even if the space goes away, the energy of that space is still there. And I think that's what's so powerful about what you've created here and, um, you know, and the allied spaces uh, that already exist and that will also be brought into being from the energy that's been generated through this project. So I just want to thank you for that. Yeah, that's so great about fractals. Did, if you have anything you wanted to say about that, Tia Monique, or about dreading the map or...? Yeah, for me, this, uh, in a very similar way, I've been thinking a lot about tidalectics and that idea of, you know, the different kind of rhythms and multiple rhythms and layers that don't just move back and forth, but not even just circular, they're moving in a kind of, in the kind of chaotic um, space. So, yeah, I think experiencing dreading the map, seeing it, I was like, I was like, this is, I said to Pat, as soon as I saw it, I was like, this is tidalectics for me, because I've been thinking about it and holding it a lot. And I went past that room today, and yes, the, the, the installation isn't there, but I could feel it and I could sense it, and I could even, I could almost, it was almost like reappearing in front of me, because I just remember how it was, it kind of floats in. It was kind of floating in and floating out, so I definitely, um, yes, Deborah wasn't there, but I definitely feel like you got that sense of what it was doing in that space. Yeah. It was a kind of um, strongly decolonizing yeah. um, installation, so, that, so that, uh, that's why there's none of it left. It, it doesn't drive pegs into, into the, you know, so there's no, there's no mark left because uh, there was no destruction, right? It just, she, just, um, the, the, she just tied things up or, uh, and then so when it, was, when it was taken away, it didn't leave a, a physical dent in the room. But as you say, the energy, the energy from that um, just carries on, just carries on. And it, and it will carry on online as well because mm. there is that recursiveness online too. It will, those images will keep going round and they'll keep, you know, years from now, we'll, we'll see another tweet with it in, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's something kind of really beautifully decolonial about that. That's about just sort of uh, a kind of opposite to a kind of colonizing that sort of says, this space gets changed irrevocably and violently mm -hmm. to sort of say, well, actually, this space gets changed ephemerally, gently, in dialogue with you. This space gets changed and it doesn't change back entirely. And that's, that's, I think, really interesting. So thank you. Yeah, I hadn't seen the link with Fractals. I have thought about Fractals a lot and, and loved Erna Brodber's novel, Nothing Matt, Nothing's Matt, but I've never, I didn't kind of think about that along with Fractals. It's a really nice idea. Thank you. Uh, Aziza. Uh, I, was, I feel like, like I could see your hand was up first. Um, so. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, wow, thank you. Um, well, really, um, I'm really, in a sense, picking up on some of what you said, Aziz, that, and some of what Deb said. Um, but I'm specifically interested in this question of, it, of the embodied and in the way in which Pat talked about the global uh, uh, black geographies, and as Rita and I like to talk about, the global black geographies as a kind of embodied, but how it accounts, it, it makes us accountable to each other. And I think part of how we're accountable is through, you know, this practice of care, you know, and so it's important for us to attend to the granularity, you know, the, 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 the details, the specificities. It is not enough just to run roughshod over the fact that, you know, you say, Pat, as a, as a, as a, a, a black woman from working class Birmingham, for example, you know, those things come into the RGS as you are, you know, interacting with the space and helping to produce that knowledge. And, you know, and so I feel like it's important for us to in a moment to kind of dwell on, you know, this idea of the embodied and the way in which that becomes part of the practice of the care 
they're tending to these very, uh, you know, these, it's like you're drilling down, you know, it's like the satellite that comes all the way down to the ground and you can pick up all of the little details. You know, those things are important because what it says is that we are, we, we come from longer history, you know, and I like this idea uh, of the fractal, you know, the sort of the spiraling nature that it is constantly interacting and, uh, you know, going back on itself, you know, um, I say to Rita all the time, and I, you know, my most recent thing now is I get a little obsessive over certain things. But in a way, as I as I think about even what that word means, you know, I'm saying perhaps that's not really what I'm really saying. It's part of a kind of uh, a folk Jamaican pract a practice and practice of constantly going back over the story because you know, Carolyn Cooper says uh, 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 Burning Spear talks about how it's been up, been up. The stories are been up, been up. So we have to be straightening them out as we're working. And that work concept requires us to go back carefully and recover the embodied elements of the geographies that we're traveling. And so I just wanted to, in a sense, dwell with that for a moment and to say how, you know, how wonderful it is really uh, to, to have this kind of very rich um, uh, sharing. So thanks to them, thanks to you, Aziza, and definitely uh, to the character team and yourself as the leader that. Yeah, I like the bunnet bunnet. I think that it's kind of, um, you know, a bit like, um, oh gosh, um, Kai Miller's, you know, uh, Phoebe Road. Phoebe Road say rah, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's not, yes, we can, we can map these roads and we can, we can draw them on maps, etc. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> the cartographer uh, maps his way to Zion. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, we can draw these roads, of course we can. But you know their 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 real geographies are not mm -hmm, mm -hmm, are not on mm -hmm. that paper. You know mm -hmm, their real geographies mm -hmm. are about uh, the ways in which people experiencing them, the ways exactly. in which they walk along them, the the repetition exactly. of walking along them day by day. Right? Exactly. You know uh, all of those sorts of things are 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 part of the geographies of of things that we often really miss because fundamentally a lot of mapping has its eye to controlling an environment, mm -hmm. whereas mm -hmm. actually when people live that environment, they're not necessarily focused on that. Correct. And, and, and just to add one last thing, Pat, um, Sarah talked about changes coming, you know, and, you know, I couldn't hear, I had to, you know, hear the song, uh, one of these days changes coming, but it might be a little slow, but I have to say, certainly since the dreading the map uh, uh, installation, I have been thinking about the RGS, the, the, the building itself, but the institution more broadly. I've been thinking about that in very different ways. And so there's a way in which there's certain kinds of, you know, I, I'm not sure who used the word, the ephemerality, you know, the afterlife, the sort of fingerprinting, uh, the sexual fingerprinting of, of that uh, uh, installation somehow seems to be, I don't know if the word is reverberating, you know, taking up um, the use of the dialectic, you know, it, it somehow seems to be transforming how we're, well, certainly how I'm feeling in my own relationship to that, you know, and I, you know, I thought perhaps it would be useful to also uh, mention that as well. Yeah. Sorry, I've just, I'm, I'm just seeing if, because uh, we had Ronald and uh, he seemed to have disappeared, so I just wanted to make sure he wasn't uh, messaging, uh, messaging me. Rita, do you, are there things that you'd like to respond to from what's been said so far? Um, oh, can't I hear think, you. Um, yeah, I think just briefly before um, I pass back to the other speakers, um, that uh, I think um, I'm really thankful for Sarah um, to come and speak this evening. Uh, you know, she's been an important and encouraging voice um, uh, within the institution. And I think um, talking about space, I, I think for all of us, you know, the RGS is a really important uh, institution within the geography subject. and going into that space has always been very challenging for me. And I think what's really been powerful about uh, the installation and, and Carrick UK in general is that it's kind of like changing those spaces. You know, it's like, uh, it's like a we're making it back into a community. You know, we're going there as a community. Um, so we can go in there as ourselves. And I think when you go in there as yourself, it's like the stuff that you do within it changes. You're not doing it for 
the academic audience you're you're bringing your work as as you are and having the confidence to do that because i think often you're trying to make work that will fit into something although no one ever tells you what but there's this, all these things that people elude and the british are terrible about that they never tell you out loud they just say oh it's this you know you've just got to sort of you know just make it work right they say things make it work which basically means like do it like they do it right mm. um and and i think in in dreading the map and other other kind of productions that we've been doing this year is that we can do it the way we need to do it you know and so and also be trusting that there's an audience for that work because that's the other thing isn't it it's not just so like we can do something different but it's like, oh but there's no audience for that mm. people are not interested in that but actually i think what we've demonstrated is that there is a thirst for this work right and the work is traveling all over the place and we're we're making new friends that we didn't even know existed you know and people are curious what's going on in in babylon britain what's going on with these black people in england man they've just gone like doing all of this kind of, you know, they're like, they're wondering what's going on, you know? And it's like, I don't know, but it's that we've just woken up, not woken up, but I feel like we've just seized the moment. Mm. And what people are seeing right now is not the beginning of something. It's really, I think, Pat, you know, the 30 years that you're talking in geography, I think it, this is part of this culmination of that work that yourself and others have kind of been beavering away, you know, laying the foundations and, myself i say in particular and others we've been the beneficiaries of that groundbreaking work and we don't we don't we don't take that lightly yeah we didn't just arrive we're, we're we're standing on the shoulders of of yourself and your peers and your mentors who kind of laid this foundation so that we could come in here and be unruly you know because mm. someone has to go in there right and lay the, and lay the foundation and yeah. um and it's time to keep building right time to keep building Rita's coming and being unruly. Love it. <laughs> Aziza and then James. Yeah, love that. Um, also because I was like, I'm, I'm not sure if I think of Pat, I mean, Pat is laying the foundation, but also as breaking the foundation. <laughs> We've been hammered to pieces. Um, I just, uh, you know, let's play with the decolonial metaphors a little bit more. Um, yeah, yeah, that's so, ex it's so true and so exciting. Um, oh, I love this conversation. I have, I guess my thoughts are going to be going back to care as well. Um, but the care that we experience in gathering with one another. And I guess that's the thing that I've been, you know, thinking about and talking about in relation to, you know, Pat for a long time. Um, that actually, I think what, what I see your legacy, I mean, you know, there's all that you write, all that, which I love, which I cite all of the time, but I think the legacy work that, that, is, that is so often ephemeral, um, that's exactly what I also felt when, like that Deborah was speaking about in terms of the like, what is left in the room, right? Like the electricity felt, all of that is around like the care work in creating space for people to be, um, creating space for people to be seen and who they need to be. And I think that's the beautiful thing that I felt across all of the kind of different installations, different beautiful experiments that we saw. Um, but definitely over this fortnight, you know, getting to experience like Tia Monique's film, getting to see the like um, global black geographer zine, like it really helped me to see how the kind of legacy of, of creating space for people to gather um, mm -hmm. is something that that is now happening with so many different people in so many different ways. And I, it just, it strikes back, it like connects back to what you said anyway, right? Like, yeah, once people start feeling a little bit more confident in themselves, it also creates space for more of that to happen, mm -hmm. um, which is exciting. I'm, I'm also thinking a lot about softness um, and the different ways that that softness gets hacked away when you're like isolated within these institutions um, and specifically what it means for three black women to be led in, to be like the leading this project, you know? Um, because this, I remember the, the last time I went to the RGS, one of the kind of questions that I was posed was, um, because I was having a conversation around like what it means to think about like feminist geography and race together, you know? And 
some of the problems I have with feminist geography in relation to that. Um, and I remember one of the kind of uh, comments that I received in response was, well, there wasn't any work being done in the 80s by like black feminists in the UK. Um, and what I find really, it's not even just like the statement, but also then in the, in the kind of uh, collection that, that was put together afterwards, there was no citing of the work that I had done in the panel to actually address race, you know? And so I was like, well, actually, this is how erasure continues, right? It's first the kind of assumption that there were no black women um, or black feminists talking about like race in the UK in the 80s when we know that is not true. Um, so who do you choose to, like, where are you choosing, to, what are you choosing to hear? Um, what can you choose not to hear as well? And how does that cut at you? you know, uh, like at us, when we have to be in these spaces, when you have to experience that erasure constantly. Um, so it's, it's, it's care, it's thinking about care and erasure alongside one another, um, and the real kind of transformative work, like truly transformative work that has happened through care through this. Yeah, thank you. Care and erasure, that's really profound, I think. Uh, there's something there, definitely. Um, James? Evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay, Pat? Yes, yeah. Yeah. No, um, I know you don't like the compliments, um, the three of you, so I'll keep it very brief and just say you all know how amazing I think you are. Um, I think this project has absolutely been fantastic. Um, and, yeah, you know how emotional I got last time when we were talking about this stuff, so I'll keep it short and sweet because you know how amazing I think you all are. But just in response to some of your questions, Pat, in terms of what are the future effects of this work, for me, I think what you've done, which is so remarkable, is that you haven't given us a seat at the table. You've made your own table, and now they want to come and join you. And that's what I think is truly remarkable about the work that you're doing. You're not, you're not trying to get us a seat at the table. You, you've made your own table, Pat. You know, and not only have you made a table, you provided the chairs, the food, the drink, for us to all to come and eat and, and dine with you. And it's, it's beautiful, Pat, what you've done. Well, you, you Tina and Rita as well. You know? And so, yeah, I want to say a big thank you in terms of, yeah, in terms of the effects. Yeah, you've, you know... And in terms of the agendas, I'll also say on that point is that what you don't, you probably don't realize this, but you, you've done it in a really incredible way throughout your career, Pat, is that I can look at you and realize that as a black scholar, I can do anything I want to do, mm. right? And, and what I mean by that is you've allowed blackness in geography to be open-ended. It doesn't have to just be about particular topics. Yeah? We can write and do and be whatever we want to be. And that is a remarkable gift that you've given the discipline, Pat. Well, you and there's others as well we can mention, but today's about you, Pat. You know, it's a truly remarkable gift that you've given us as, as a discipline. And it's one that, Pat, decades, hundreds of years to come, they're going to be still singing your name, Pat, so I'm telling you this because it's, it's incredible what you've done. You know, and when, I really mean it when I say that you've allowed us to just be. You know, when I come to the RGS and I've got my funky random shirts on, do you know why I'm doing that? Because Pat Noxerlo has got my back and I can do whatever I want in that space. You know, and it's, it's so empowering. So, yeah. I know that's not the intellectual answer you're probably looking for. We might get to that later on, but I just wanted to start with that little bit of kind of praise for you, Pat. I know, you, and, and, and Rita and Tina as well, you've all done a fantastic job, you know, um, but, but, but yeah, I just think, yeah, thank, thank you so much for everything you've done. And yeah, thank you for providing us with the table, but also the food, the drink, the chairs, <laughs> you know, the, the, the whole lot. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, James. Uh, it's, uh, I, I do find it a bit overwhelming, so no more of any of that stuff. <laughs> but but, uh, but the making making of your own table, I think it's a really important point, you know, because we all tell our children that, well, I tell my children all the time, you can be anything you want to be, right? You can be anything you want to be. And sometimes for our children, it's a lot of pressure because actually the society kind of tells them, actually, no, you can't be all those things that you want to be. And I want to be able to say to you know, black geographers coming up. It's genuinely true, <laughs> guys. You can be anything you want to be. You know, it's not like we have to pretend that you can be anything you want to be until society tells you what you have to be. Um, you actually genuinely, let's see what you want to be. Let's see and let's fly. You know, and that's, that's, that's to me the vision. That's the next kind of thing coming down the road. What I'd really like, you know, as a kind of legacy from, from Carrie Cook and similar sorts of projects is that people really get to live that. You know, they get the funding. That's really important, what Tia and Monique are saying. They get the funding. They get the institutional support, because that's really important. 
Sometimes it's like, here's some funding, oh, but you've got no support. So, you know, try and manage. <laughs> you actually can't manage. So, you know, they get the, ins they get the institutional support, they get the funding, uh, and they get the space, right? The autonomous space to be able to do what they want to, to do and be who they want to be. To me, that's the vision, that's the thing that's coming down the road, um, where we get all of those things, all of our ducks in a row, not just one or two of them. Thank and you very a, much, Jane. Apologies, Tim, and Eve. I kept calling you Tia, not saying your full name. So, yeah, apologies oh, for that. That's fine, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Jane. Ronald, you're back with us. <laughs> Is there something you wanted to say? Oh, yeah, hi. <laughs> um, it's been such a great conversation today, um, you know, just sort of reflecting on this work. Um, and, you know, like a lot of that is because it's been such a great project. Um, and I think we've talked a lot about, you know, kind of the experiments, um, you know, the willingness to experiment. But I, I do want to say something about what I see as a kind of insistence on beauty that's been part of this project. Um, and that for me has been very uh, affecting um, you know, the sort of insistence in doing work in film, um, you know, and across different kinds of, 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 of media, um, you know, so also not, not insistent that, insisting that the page is the only space in which we can be legible. Um, and I think that's been a beautiful thing. Um, and so I just want to say that and to, to commend the whole team, um, you know, and, and Pat in particular for spearheading this project, uh, which has just been tremendous. Um, and, and, and the other thing that, that's been really striking about this is, um, and again, thinking about the question of geography, is just the expansiveness of this geography um, that you've engaged with. Um, you know, sort of thinking transatlantically, um, thinking across space, but also across time, right? Um, and I think that there's been something really powerful and beautiful about that. So thank you all. Yes, thank you very much. Anything you'd like to sort of add to, uh, Tia Monique, Rita, uh, to any of that? Uh, no, just taking it all in and echoing. Everyone, I don't want to flatter you too much on the, on the stage, but I think we're all really proud of the work um, that we've done on this project. But I know that Rita feels the same way and that it wouldn't be possible without Pat. And we've said it in all of our meetings and we'll say it here again publicly that, um, yeah, we really, really appreciate everything that Pat has done. And it just wouldn't have been... It, it's taken a lot of support, not just... Pat has protected us a lot from the institutions that we've had to deal with. And that's enabled us to be free to just do with things and not have to deal with forms and protocol and all of those things. And I think in, in, as a model for mentorship, that really has empowered us to do the things that you see in this project. And without it, we probably wouldn't have been able to do it in the same way. So yeah, just wanting to echo what everyone's saying. I don't know if you've got anything more, Rita. Yeah, I, I think it, it speaks to exactly what you said, uh, Tia Monique. I think um, like creating these spaces and, uh, you know, Ziza talks about it, about care. And I think often in these things in the academy, they become like a trope, you know, but actually what we've seen across this project, and it's a whole year project, right? It's a long time that Pat has been practicing this throughout the project and beyond, but, you know, and also as well as, as our mentor, like Pat, what you've done, you've shown us a way to work that can work in the academy. Mm. Cause you know, I have a lot of opinions about the academy. Let me say it, let me say that. And, uh, but actually what you do, you demonstrate how to do this in the academy. Cause it's, I think, especially for myself at this stage of my, of my pr process is that, you have to see it, you know, people can tell you it's this and it's this, but you have to see these things. So I think as well, it's about seeing how people do academic work, how they do it, not just for a time, but for a career. Mm. You know, how do you, how, how do we do longevity in, in an academic setting? And, and you've been such a great example of that, Pat, and that what you've demonstrated is that you can move forward, you know, that you, you develop, you're a brilliant scholar, um, but also as well, your, um, what I think I love about you, Pat, is that your humility, you know, uh, 
you take advice, you know, I really felt on this project that it was a, a collaborative project, you know, it wasn't just you and telling us what to do, it was very much you, you valued our opinions and you took on board our comments and our advice and uh, I think this is what comes through in the work, it's that we can work collaboratively, this is a real thing, and in that the brilliant work comes, comes to fruition. And I think we then go out, and certainly in my project, I, I kind of really just mirrored some of that, that knowledge that you've Im imbued in, in me to kind of also practice that. And it worked, you know, and we've got the evidence of this. And, and, and I know people will be coming back to the website, coming back to the YouTube channels to kind of see, okay, we want to continue this as well. You know, we want to continue this as well. And I'm very excited about these, the undergraduates, my peers at PhD and postgraduate level, kind of seeing this as the starting point. This is the starting point and taking it forward. Um, and I, I'm very excited about these times, you know, and I, I think that's what we want to do. We want to create an excitement about research and about embodied research um, and having the courage to keep going, you know, that there's a future for this. Yeah. I mean, I would, I, I would sort of say also, I guess, as a critical geographer that, um, you know, what Tia Monique mentioned about kind of standing in between uh, people and the kind of worst excesses of institutions, it's not a comfortable position, actually. And um, one thing that I would say, um, so AHRC has funded uh, these 10 EDI fellowships and very grateful for that. Um, very grateful to have had one of these fellowships. Um, but also I'm very aware that although they're called fellowships, there was no buyout from my normal role. So, um, so there's a kind of, um, there's an excess in there, you know, there's an excess of, of effort that was required. You're kind of doing two jobs, uh, a fellowship and a, uh, uh, and your normal job, uh, so and there's a toll on for that. You know, you get you get really tired, and then you know the uh, standing between, you know, placing your body between um, the institution and the people that you're working with. Uh, I I expect it of myself. It's a responsibility, but it's it is it isn't an easy thing. It's not comfortable to do that. And um, we shouldn't have to do it, right? We shouldn't have to. Um, we shouldn't have to. Uh, I guess, you know, deal with all of the the unnecessary administration, deal with all of the kind of um, uh, burdensome paperwork, and do all of that um, at weekends and in evenings and and everything else. I mean, I'm not complaining in the sense that Carrie Cook is, is, was something that I was really committed to do. Um, but I think it has to, it, this is why I'm talking about institutions. And this is why I was really keen for this last session to be within the institution of the Royal Geographical Society. Because it's, a, it's a, what this building does, I think is really um, a symbolize the institution the academic institution. It's beautiful in lots of ways, um, and there are lots of possibilities, and certainly the partnership with the Royal Geographical Society has been very fruitful, actually, in lots of ways. This year, we haven't just done this project, we've actually done other things as well. There's been a lot going on in relation to the Royal Geographical Society. But my experience of working within academic institutions is that it's actually been, uh, there's a toll, it's quite hard. Um, and, I, you know, we shouldn't have to nurture black geographies uh, on the back of, um, you know, that kind of, I suppose, you know, super exploitation of time, you know. Caring for people shouldn't have to be so hard, right? So I, I, I want to put, I, I know it's a bit of a damper, but we're not quite the finished the evening, so I think it's a good time to put it in. I, I, I wanted to put that in because I think, you know, I don't want to give people the impression that it's actually, you can create a space like this easily within the academy as it is. That's so why I say this is a vision. I'm hoping that Carrie Cook lays down a vision for a future 
where you don't have to have that kind of uh, excessive exploitation in order to care. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Um, Aziza, did you have your hand up? Sorry, I can't hear you. You muted. Sorry, yeah. Uh, but again, I think it was Cynthia who had their hand up first. Um, I have many thoughts, as you know, but I just wanted to... Oh, Cynthia, sorry. Go on, Cynthia. No, Aziza, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, well, okay, well, I, I guess it's it's speaking back to the thing, like, you know, wanting to talk about the toll, the cost um, that you're talking about. Yeah, like, I, because I, I think, I think that's, honestly, I think about that a lot these days as well. Um, the amount of, like, violence that you, you're constantly having to witness as well. Um, yeah. And also what it means to actually try and take care um, within that context, right? And, and take care of yourself and take care of like the kind of wider community that we're imagining. Um, and I mean, you know, I, you, you know, I have some concerns about how you take care of yourself in relation to the wider community, but no, because, you know, thank you. Um, and I, I think everyone's expressed such like, yeah, expressed what it means to have your scholarship, your scholarship and your practice um, in the world, you know, in the world with us. Um, but also, but also thinking about that toll seriously and thinking about what it means for you to tend to yourself um, and for us to create space for that as well in the kind of recognizing of what what's standing in the face, of, what's standing and having to navigate particular institutional burdens looks like. Um, because I've been thinking about the kind of role that we often place on like black women, and I've seen it, I guess, with black women, specifically darker skinned black women academics, right, as like there to care um, for so many other people, um, which isn't, which, which is important, which I think you, you speak to in, in so many different ways, um, because I think that actually you know, what you're talking, like, I, I was thinking about what Rita was saying specifically about, you know, the importance of seeing the way that Pat does academic work. But actually, I think the strength of the way Pat does academic work is that she refracts that back to all of us and creates space for us to see all of the different ways that we could do academic work, right? Like that we do academic work as well. Um, I was hearing that in the kind of like, you know, I really, I truly want people to believe you can be anything you want to be. Let's just see, you know, and it's the having someone who's in the process with you in the, let's see where we're going to go with this. That is so transformational. But also, I mean, I don't, you know, there's such a commitment, like a black feminist. I mean, I'm obviously, but <laughs> it's a definite, I feel it as such a deep commitment to like a black feminist politics of like caring for our differences, caring for like, um, the possibility that happens through our differences, you know, um, that isn't about like, you know, one person being the carer, but really about all of us actually being part of this atmosphere where we're trying to imagine care differently. We're trying to create space for Black thought to exist differently, you know, and that happens within and outside of these institutions that we're located, that, that we have to navigate. Um, mm. Yeah. Oh, uh, second thing. I also think that there is a real importance just for any white academics out there listening in, um, for white academics to place their bodies in between ourselves and these institutions. Um, because that's, I think, part of the thing. What I have noticed, the real, the real transformation that I've seen or felt um, in relation to academic institutions is when I have seen white academics placing their bodies in between myself and the kind of worst of the institutional violence that I'm seeing. Um, so that there's space for you to also try and set boundaries or to, to be differently in these kind of spaces that constantly reproduce one's absence. Um, so yeah, just wanting there to be a clear conversation that actually more people should be doing that work. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'll leave it at that. Absolutely, that's, that's been one of the most hopeful things, hasn't it, in the past, you know, two or three years, I think, the sort of sense that I see 
uh, young white academics who say, this isn't about you, it's about me needing things to be better. You know, it's not about, so the, uh, it's that move from kind of people saying, I want to do something ab about anti-racism. What do you think, Pat? You know, how, what should I do, you know, all this? Whereas to, to, to me actually finding out that somebody has done something and them saying, you can sign this if you want to, kind of thing. Me just finding out on Twitter that someone in my department is already doing this thing. That, to me, is exciting. You know, that's something kind of new, where it's about actually, I'm going to just put myself on the line without, you know, having to have you care for me to put myself on the line or having to, you know, perform for you, you to perform you know, care for me while I, you know, all of this, all of these complicated kind of, but actually the person just doing it, you know, because it's important to them, because it's a justice thing, right? Those things are very, very hopeful, I gotta say. Can I bring in Cynthia at this point and come back to you, Agustina, is that okay? Cynthia? Hiya. Hello. Hello. Um, yeah, I couldn't go through this whole thing without saying something. Um, I mean, having been, just a witness for this over the last, you know, over a year has been such a privilege and so amazing. Um, and, you know, everyone has mentioned these various different artistic interventions over the last year and how um, much joy and comfort I've got from, from being able to see them even from afar. Um, and one of the things that I, I just wanted to mention that I think a few other people have, have said as well is I definitely feel coming up now, you know, in the first year of my PhD and with uh, admittedly very few, but, you know, a few other black um, and brown uh, students also doing their PhDs in geography. And I think um, what interacting with, with uh, Kara Cook and with Rita and Tia Monique and, and Pat, what has been such an important reminder to me is is how often we forget what a privilege it is to feel impatient and and what a privilege it, it is to to have frustration and to be able to express it with people around you who feel a similar way mm -hmm. um which i know was a very very different uh it was a very very different experience 20 years ago for, for you pat when you were doing this and and even not so long ago 10 years ago how different the discipline looked and um, how even though there is that frustration and that impatience and, and anger sometimes, uh, how exciting it is to, to be coming into a space which, you know, so early in my, in my academic career, if I, if I would even call it that, but, um, and, and to feel excited about what there is. And I think that it's the work that you guys are doing that, that has made that possible and, and very few other other people are doing that. So I just wanted to give my thanks in the same way that everyone else has done. Um, and I think a question I had that uh, Rita and Pat, you've already answered, but Tia Monique, I'd love to hear from you as well, is, is what you're excited about, what you're really excited about to see coming down the pathway, as, as Pat put it. I, I think I'm excited to see, for Carrie Cook to continue. Like, I keep saying I've been really reluctant to call this the finale, to be honest with you, because I feel like we've only just started. I feel like there's so much more, and we've, we've kind of each been working on different parts of the project. Um, so I'm excited to see what those different areas birth. And so for me, I'm really excited to apply for more funding and to be funded by the AHRC again, to get a fellowship <laughs> that will buy you out. And for us to continue to um, empower people, I think for me, taking this step out, um, I can see what I want to do next with, with uh, the film and everything that we've, I've learned from Pat on this project. And um, I'm ready to, to, to do that um, within, like Rita says, within the academy or without the academy. Um, there are lots of, we have lots of spaces now and we can create those spaces for us to um, be cared for and to care for other people. And I, I'm really excited by the co-creation and the co-collaboration um, way of doing scholarship. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing that more and to bringing more of my dance community into these kind of spaces because they have a lot, um, 
a lot of things and, and rich, rich knowledges to share. Yeah. It's about making that possible, isn't it? It's about yeah. um, trying to create a space. Because this is the, the second kind of iteration for me. So for me, it's about iterations. So I've had a kind of Caribbean insecurities and creativity, um, which Ron Alden and uh, Susan were involved in kind of network. And then this is, uh, you know, Caribbean uh, uh, create, uh, creativity, uh, you know, so a similar kind of network, thinking about insecurities, etc., but a, a very different kind of formation of that. And I guess what I'm thinking about next is kind of what, what does that become next, mm -hmm. you know, in the same sort of way that, um, you know, uh, Deb was talking so, so kind of articulately about, um, uh, about Sonia's... Um, sculpture and the ways in which that um, kind of changes and carries through that energy. Uh, what Earl Lovelace calls that changing same, you know, that, that it does change in each iteration. Um, it will keep moving um, and it, it will be something else um, mm. which will respond to that moment. Uh, and it might not be me, it might be somebody else, you know. Mm. So that, that to me, that's been the exciting thing about, about Carrie Cook for me, just drawing in so many different people who are, you hope that those people will take this on to do something that is connected but different. And uh, that I, I really love that idea, rather than the sort of neoliberal academic idea of impact, you know, where you kind of like, you kind of collide with society and force them to take on your ideas. Um, you want something that's a bit more where, you know, people might take elements of it, really change it, make it into something that is needed in their time and place. And that's uh, this is really exciting to me. Uh, Agostino. I should do. Yeah, I just wanted to say one very uh, final thing, really. Um, there's some words that have come to me as I've been sitting here listening to this discussion. One of the questions I think somebody asked you was, you know, what is, say, like the legacy then of this, of this project or of this work, as you would say, the careful work? I would say what you've also managed to do, um, in addition to all the other things, you know, Ronald talked about beauty, you know, we've been heaping accolades onto you, which you've been, you know, crying, I guess, at some point, um, over. But really, there's a kind of methodology that you've unveiled for us and that you have demonstrated. And it's a methodology about black feminist practice, a sort of decolonial uh, practice of care that bears witness, so it's co-witnessing we're sitting together in the, you know, Aziza uses this word, uh, the gathering, you know, in that gathering space and those spaces in between, you know, the, 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 the sort of, uh, I guess what we would say the fugitive, but, you know, I'm from the Caribbean, so I'm going to say the, mar the spaces of marinage, you know, in the ways in which we're taking up space, but doing it together. And I think that, you know, for me, that's one of the sort of defining things that have come out of that have come out of that have come out of this project is the way that you have demonstrated your you know we, we keep coming back to this methodology of um, collaboration of bearing witness of you know um, uh, producing or creating these beautiful experiments but also inviting because there's a there's a whole way in which there's a kind of spectatorship that is helping to build on the project as well so the, the curated audience who have been traveling with you, journeying with you throughout the life of the project has been another layer of witnessing to that kind of care. And, you know, and, uh, uh, yeah, I just really wanted to say that. I'm sure I have nothing else to add to all of this richness that everybody else has um, spoken about. But I thought that that came out very clearly to me as I was listening to the conversation and particularly towards the end. So, signing off. Thank you very much, Agostino. I just thought, I guess, that you, you know, what you bring up there is, is really important, that sense that, the, that um, we've got people online like Lisa Palmer. She's been, she's uh, given quite a few comments during this evening um, where she talks about uh, care work and ethical work being rewarding but hugely demanding. Uh, Abena Clark says, I know that I found an academic home at the Society for Caribbean Studi Studies under, under uh, my leadership. So I guess that whole, uh, oh, it's Kessler. Um, yes, yeah, so I guess that whole thing about having that sort of audience, you know, that, that kind of public that, and community 
that gathers itself around, around you is hugely important, right? For our, our curated audience, I know there's been some people, uh, Mamadi, um, for example, contacted me on email to say she wasn't able to get online, so she did try to join us this evening. And I know that there's been a lot of people who've contacted me during the week who said it was very, just very difficult to get online for, or to, to be able to join us for this evening, but I know that they're there. You know, I know that they're listening on YouTube, I know that they'll be watching the recording, I know that they're, they're there. So we've kind of created communities, which were already existing, of course, but they, you know, we've kind of gathered people around us. And I think for us as a group, that's been incredibly empowering, because it's not just about us as a group. It's about knowing that there's that community of people with whom we've worked, you know, that with whom we've created um, Tia Monique's film and uh, Rita's uh, zine and all of the other things that we've done. We have been with those communities of creative people, but also this curated audience where people have, you know, really kudos to you guys because it's been a long fortnight, these Caricut fortnights from the 18th to the 28th. You know, we've had four events, and many people have been with us for the whole of those four events, right to the bitter end where we're kind of nine o'clock on a Friday evening. Uh, people have stayed with us, and we really appreciate it because actually we just feel held, yeah. right, by those people because they're those same faces, those same people coming and always supporting us. Uh, it just means such a lot. And then that wider YouTube audience. So I was looking at the figures, you know, um, for the, the different videos and how much people have, how many people have been watching them, you know. For the first one, Anna Lee Davis's um, short film, there's been like a thousand views of that film. You know, and there's been 200, 300 people watching the, um, the conversations that we've recorded. So, you know, people are, there's a, this wider group of people who are following and engaging and sending us messages on Twitter. And, you know, so there's, there's a real sense of community of a kind of lively um, black community. And to me, that feels so important, right? It's something new. Uh, to me, something new that we have that kind of real sort of burgeoning community. And that's why I say, I guess, you know, we're coming towards nine o'clock and we need to be finishing. I guess the thing I want to sort of leave with really is that uh, academic careers happen at the moment within institutions, right? Within academic institutions. And those institutions um, need to pay attention to the fact that we're forming communities intellectual and academic communities inside them, um, but if need be, outside them. Right? Because Carrie Cook has really been, it's been inside the in institutions, but it's also been outside. Um, and really, it's for those institutions, as academic institutions, to foster black academic careers. Otherwise, we'll find other spaces. Um, so they need, to, they need to step up at this point. This is why, you know, thank you very much to the Royal Geographical Society for hosting us this evening. Thank you so much to our technicians who've been brilliant and so supportive. While we were off, while Sarah was doing her talk, they were coming and fiddling with our mics and things, making sure that we could be heard. So thank you so much for all of that. Uh, and thank you to our curated audience, especially kind of you last six or seven who have kind of um, stayed with us right till the end. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you for all that. To all the people who've engaged with us over the last year, um, watch this space. We'll be here. You know, we'll we'll uh, be looking for the next opportunity. Uh, do be in touch if you you know if you have ideas or you want to kind of connect with us. Uh, we'd be very happy to see you. Otherwise, yeah. Till the next time. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs>